Hi, welcome to CS540. The synchronous lectures will start next week on June 21st, and I understand that some of you cannot attend the synchronous lectures. So here I'm going to briefly talk about the course, including the schedule, the grading scheme, and the homework. So let's get started with the schedule. So there are two main parts of the course. The first half is on machine learning, and the second half is on traditional AI, which includes search and game theory. So normally in a fall semester or a winter semester, they start with search and at the end they cover machine learning. This summer I'm going to start with machine learning because that's the hardest part of the course. So if I start with the most difficult materials, then you will have the whole summer to think about it, to figure it out. So basically it means in the first few weeks, the course will be relatively difficult and it will get better later in the summer. Uh, other than the different ordering of the topics, the materials that we will cover should be roughly the same as what's covered in a typical fall semester or a winter semester. There are a few minor differences. So for example, I will spend slightly more time on reinforcement learning and I will spend less time on statistical inference, which includes things like t-test, f-test, I think those topics are covered in a statistics course, so we'll spend less time on those. And in the second half, I will spend more time on more advanced topics in game theory, and we will spend less time in logic. Because I think many other computer science courses cover the topic of logic, so we will spend less time here. And next, uh, there are four synchronous lectures each week. So it means every day except for Friday, there is a synchronous lecture. And in each synchronous lecture, at the beginning, I will review the basic materials, which means I will introduce the topic, introduce the problem we are solving, and then I will start going over numerical examples. So I'll basically go through one numerical example and then I will give you a similar example, but with different numbers or different functions, and you will solve it as a quiz question. So these quiz questions will be graded, but they will not be graded for correctness. So if you answer something incorrectly, you will not lose the point. The way to lose the points is to answer something that's completely irrelevant. So for example, if you have a true or false question, and I'm going to give you five choices, A, B, C, D, E, and I will say B is true and D is false. If you answer A, it means you are probably not here, you're just pushing random buttons on your phone, then you will lose the points. Uh, we will use a quizzing app called Socrative, and we'll talk about the details in the first synchronous lecture. And the other option is the pre-recorded lectures. So some of you may have already noticed that I already posted all the pre-recorded lectures from last year. So this year, I'm planning to make minor changes. So I think some of the lectures are not explained really well last year, so I'm going to re-recall some of the lectures with the same topic, but I will explain it in a, in a better way. So if you want to start really early, it's okay. So the materials should be the same. And if I make any changes, I will make announcement on Canvas. So the difference between these two formats is basically different learning styles. So if you prefer learning through numerical examples, then you may want to go to the synchronous lectures. And if you prefer going through mathematical derivations and mathematical proofs, then you may prefer the pre-recorded lectures. And of course you can do either or both. They should cover the same topics, the same materials, and both formats should cover everything that's necessary for the homework and the exams. And next, about the textbooks. So there are two textbooks. Both of them are optional. So the RN textbook is a less mathematical kind of introductory artificial intelligence textbook. 
And if you prefer something that's more formal, more mathematical, then you may want the SS textbook. So if you don't have a good math background, you may find that book really difficult to read. So that's why both of the textbooks are okay, and both of them are optional in the sense that no homework problem and exam questions will be assigned from the textbooks. And next, the grading scheme. So the course is basically 40% programming and 60% exams. So I understand that the exams are usually relatively difficult. So I will give you the option of replacing 10% of the exam grades using the quiz grades, which are the quiz questions during the synchronous lectures. A and also you can replace another 10% of the exam grades using the math homework grades. So your exam may count either 40%, 50%, or 60%. Mm -hmm. Again, depending on your preferences. So if you want to spend time studying every day or every week, then you may want to go to the synchronous lectures and solve the math homework problems. If you just want to spend like 72 hours nonstop before the midterm and the final, you can do that too. Then you can just have the exams count 60% of the grades. So about the programming homework, uh, any programming language is okay. But we're going to recommend Java and Python because the TAs and I will only be able to provide help with Java and Python. And also, we will be posting solutions in Java and Python. But if you prefer other languages, for example, popular ones are MATLAB, R, and JavaScript, that, that, that's okay too, as long as you can use it to solve the problems. And, and produce the correct outputs. So we'll be grading your output instead of grading your code. And next is a question that some of you already asked, is what if you are unable to attend the synchronous lectures, but you still want to get the points for the quizzes? So there are a few options. First, each week there will be like one lecture that does not have quiz questions. So uh, we will have a discussion topic on Piazza over the weekend. So you can earn the qu quiz points by participating in the discussions. So for example, in the first week, I will be asking you to find a picture. Either you can take a photo yourself, or you can find an image on the internet that is classified incorrectly by the object recognition model called MobileNet. So you, you will find the picture that's classified incorrectly and share it on Piazza and maybe di discuss with your friend like why it is cl classified incorrectly or something like that. That's the first option. And the second option is you can sign up to help writing solutions to homework qu questions. Uh, so I, I will talk about solutions to homework questions in the next video, but here, uh, if you want to volunteer to write those solutions, um, you can you can you can post it on Piazza before the deadline. And as long as your solution is correct and you provide some explanation, like why you solve the question this way, n not just one equation and the answer. As long as you have some explanations, you will get the points. So th that's the second way. And the last way, I'm not going to promise anything, but at the beginning of every lecture, we will be playing a game. Not a real game, but a game in the sense of game theory. So we'll play some of these games, and you may be able to learn, I mean, earn additional points by participating in these games. And you cannot earn a total of more than 10 points from these three options. And here, this is the, the conversion table. So in the last two years, I used this table at the end, so I'm not going to change it this year as well. So if you get more than 90 points, 
you'll get an A. So I'm not going to curve the grades. So the only exception is if I have some really bad questions on the midterm or on the final, I may drop those questions. So for example, if the question is really difficult that less than a quarter of the student answered correctly, then I will drop the question. Or if the question is kind of negatively correlated with the other questions. So if you answer other questions correctly, then you are less likely to answer this question correctly. And there is a measure called RPBI to measure the correlation. And if that correlation is negative, then I will also drop the, the, the question. It means the question is not great. Uh, and the, the time for the midterm and final exams are already set. So that's that. And n next, uh, we have two TAs. And uh, I don't know their office hours yet, but we will announce it in the first week. And I will have office hours from 2 to 3 daily. So from Monday to Friday, I will hold office hours on Zoom. So those are the official office hours. And on Saturday and Sunday, I will be holding in-person office hours. So I will be in the computer science, science building. And if you want to come and ask questions or ask me to help debug in person, then you can come. So I will not force you to get the vaccine or wear a mask, but I would recommend you to do at least one of these two things. Uh, at the end, here is a list of the relevant cost websites. So the, these are the pages for the previous two times I taught the course, the same course, and these are the same course taught by uh, other professors.